So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the sequel to the wildly successful Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse that came out in 2018. So right off the bat, I have to address how artistically brilliant this movie was. Just like its predecessor, Into the Spider-Verse, this movie really did feel like a comic book was drawn and written out and then thrown onto the big screen and brought to life. There were just so many times throughout this entire movie, I was sitting there watching this film, absolutely blown away with how they were bringing and combining all of these styles together to make one cohesive animated film that actually made sense with how they were doing all of these separate artistic styles. For instance, Gwen Stacy's universe looked so drastically different than Miles Morales' universe. And his universe looked so different than Miguel O'Hara's universe. And they were just taking all of these artistic styles, making them each unique and their own, and combining them into one story without it feeling jarring and not making sense. It actually really did flow together. And the way they were able to do that with animation, I was just really blown away. So there were a few new additions to this Spider-Verse movie. You've got Spider-Man India, Spider-Punk, Spider-Woman, Spider-Man 2099, who is Miguel O'Hara. And all of these new additions I thought were great. However, I thought Miguel O'Hara, Oscar Isaac playing Spider-Man 2099 was just fantastic. When you've got a movie that is this big and sometimes overwhelming with how much is going on, to have a villain that is pretty straightforward and to the point, I think goes so far. You've got this character, Spider-Man 2099. He's trying to protect the multiverse, the Spider-Verse, and he's doing it by any means necessary. He's doing what he thinks is right by any means necessary. And sometimes the worst things imaginable are done with the best intentions. So I thought his character was fantastic and I am so excited to kind of see where they go with him in the future because there is a very soon to be released sequel coming here in 2024. But before we get there, we have to address our two main characters from this movie, Gwen Stacy and Miles Morales, who I thought again were absolutely fantastic. I think Gwen Stacy carried the movie a little bit more this time around than Miles Morales, which I have absolutely no issue with. Gwen Stacy's character, you were really getting a lot more depth and character development from her in this movie. You were kind of getting those emotional tugs at your heart um, a few different times as she was kind of going through some different family stuff. And I thought it was just really, really well written. Uh, Miles Morales also getting a lot more depth with his character as he's kind of growing up. He's starting to get to that age where uh, he wants to go do his own thing, but he's still under his parents' roof and he's trying to do what he thinks is right, but he still wants to be his own person. And you just get so much um, character development from these two and you get so much more emotional depth. However, I did think the first maybe 30 to 45 minutes of this movie might have been bogged down a little bit too much with family drama that I think it kind of took some of the pacing away. Overall, I think this movie was just absolutely animation in its finest form. Um, however, I thought the story at a few different times kind of felt a little weighed down, a little too heavy, and just a little bit too much going on at other times. Overall, this movie for me was such a fun time and I am looking forward to seeing it again. My final score for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is a 9 out of 10. Definitely something I recommend going to see as soon as possible. But have you seen Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? If you have, what are your thoughts? Comment down below. Let's talk some Spider-Verse. But this is going to wrap up this review and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.